Welcome back. I'm Dan Shaheen, and today uh, we're going to talk about uh, something a little different. Uh, I've been reviewing lots and lots of new comics lately. I go to the comic shop every Wednesday when they open. I get the new stuff, and I review my favorites uh, and stuff that I think you might want to hear about. But, you know, as the price of comics has gone up, I've started to realize that the quality is not always as good as some of the comics that I used to read when I was a kid. It's as far as individual issue and the amount of entertainment that you get out of a single issue. This has led me to go back to exploring back issues again. And and today, we're going to explore one of my all-time favorite single comics. In fact, it is my favorite single-issue Batman story uh, DC has ever published. It's super special to me. In fact, it's so special that... The word special is in the name. It's Batman Special, number one, written by Mike W. Barr, and art by the great Michael Golden, today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back. Today, uh, we're going to talk about Batman Special, number one, and boy, is this a special comic. So this is published in... 1984 okay in 1984 I was nine years old I didn't read this comic at nine years at, at the age of nine but I probably read it by the time I was about maybe 12 13 11 somewhere in that area soon after I started working at uh, a comic book store Mike's Coliseum in San Jose back when I was 11 this was a, a, a you would see this in back issue bins uh, quite a bit you know it was only a couple years old at that time <clears throat> and it's just very intriguing. I mean, the cover alone is unlike anything that was going on on the stands of Batman. Really weird, design-heavy thing. It's a special. And there's one thing missing from this comic and the cover of this comic that was on every other Batman comic pretty much at the time. And that is the uh, Comics Code Authority. This is not a Comics Code approved book. And I'm not positive... But I'm pretty sure that this was not distributed on newsstands. This went. This was a direct market exclusive. I might be wrong, uh, but I'm willing to bet one of you nerds out there knows the answer to that. Um, so, you know, let, let's take a look at this book and 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 figure out why uh, I say that this is like the greatest Batman single issue story of all time. Let's uh, go to the Million Dollar Comics Camp, shall we? <laughs> Wow, and boy, talk about a million dollar comic. This is one of my all-time favorites. This is the original back issue. I just picked it up recently. I found it online. You can find this a lot of places. It is not very expensive. I got this one in, I think, very fine condition for not much. Paltry few dollars. I mean, back in the day, four or five bucks might seem like a lot to pay for a back issue of a comic. This was only $1.25 when it came out on the stands. But today, your average comic, the cheapest comic you're going to get from Marvel or DC is $3.99, and more and more of them are $4.99, $6.99, $7.99, $9.99. They're trying all these price points in different formats. Yet the storytelling techniques have changed since the days of this comic. This comic, uh, it's got what would today you know, be like a multi-issue, at least, story arc uh, involving this really super cool character that a lot of people may not have heard of now they've kind of brought back a version of this character in recent years and we'll talk about that but this is the wrath and this is batman special number one i'm gonna take a look i'm gonna start here in the original comics issue just because you know the old-fashioned uh flat coloring uh looks great on the million dollar comic cam for one thing but you know i want you to know you don't have to get the back issue this is available in a couple of different versions a couple of different formats uh that one of which we'll look at today one of which is this uh legends of the dark knight michael golden it's got a real shiny shiny cover it doesn't play well with the million dollar comics cam but on the inside we can take a look and you'll see that this has nice uh new coloring and uh and this will lie pretty flat here and I think this will look really good for us to take a look at this issue and what, what really makes it so special. Um, 
So let's talk about the creative team. Mike W. Barr uh, is a long time DC Batman writer. He started in 75 uh, writing for Detective Comics. Michael Golden started working for uh, DC in 1977, worked on Mr. Miracle and Batman Family. And you can get all of those Batman Family issues in this Legends of the Dark Knight Michael Golden um, hardcover that came out recently. And you'll see his early work on that Batman Family stuff as he quickly learned. He, he came from the commercial art world and he just quickly learned the tropes and tricks of comics and quickly became just an, like an artist's artist, right? Everybody loves Michael Golden. And he influenced so many people. You know him from, he broke out in uh, on in Marvel Comics on the Micronauts. He also co-created the NAM. Uh, worked on Bucky O'Hare with the great Neil Adams. So like, this guy's been around. And then he came back to be like an art director or special art director or something at Marvel for in recent years. And, you know, it's just deep in the comics industry. So this story starts off with two parallel tales, and one of which we're very familiar with uh, in, in what used to be called Park Row and is now called Crime Alley. Back in these days, they said, you know, crime. What, what's now called Crime Alley was originally Park Row, a ritzy neighborhood, and that's why Bruce Wayne uh, and his parents were there, and they get mugged by old good old Joe Chill. Um, meanwhile, on that exact same night, in another neighborhood, a neighborhood so gritty and dirty, it doesn't have a name. Um, something else was going down, and a rookie cop uh, named Jim Gordon is chasing down someone. And so we get to see the parallel tales of how Batman's family was gunned down by a criminal and how he uh, uh, was, was saved by Leslie Tompkins or found by Leslie Tompkins and then devoted his life to studying and... Uh, uh, criminology and martial arts and everything else and you know until that bat flew in through his window as an omen he became the Batman well this other dude on the same night his parents he was with his parents criminal parents taking their kid uh, on a job and both the parents were killed by James W. Gordon right this guy grew up in correctional facilities and devoted his life to like wanting to defeat authority and kill cops and uh you know and then basically spend his whole life doing that so we get to see the player on the other side we've got the batman and the wrath this is this character's first and spoiler alert only appearance uh as far as this original version of the character we're gonna find out why we're gonna spoil some stuff here um so beware Anyway, what we get to see on display is just a, like a master class in storytelling and action by Michael Golden. I mean, scenes like this where Batman rushes in to... James Gordon is getting his lunch and, uh, and, and, and in comes somebody. You know, he's like, oh, the police cafeteria only uses metal trays. That's plastic. It might be a bomb, right? Batman, we don't even get to see him. Just so action-packed he's there. And this is our first look at the Batman um, by Michael Golden here, and, and it's a beautiful shot, a beautiful picture. You know, Golden was is, was a different breed. Uh, he took, instead of going the whole Neil Adams hyper-realism route, he has a lot of hyper-real, a lot of realism, especially in backgrounds and uh, technology and buildings and stuff. But then there's a cartooniness to it that would normally be sort of like funny in funny comics, but... He's able to employ it in his character's acting um, to really produce just comics that are just fun to read and really like resonate, at least with me, okay? This guy's one of my all-time faves. So what we get to see is we get to see, you know, emerging from the shadows as, 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 as Bruce Wayne or as uh, Batman talks to Commissioner Gordon, we've got the Wrath talking to his... Um, pal who's the daughter of a, of a of a deceased mobster who really wants gordon dead too right um meanwhile we get to see just how ruthless this guy is as somebody busts in on him that they weren't expecting instantaneously killed with a knife throw now this is your first clue i think and we see blood dripping from the knife this is something that would not fly in a comic code uh, approved book 
And this is why I think, and I didn't know this at the time, this is why when I read this as a kid, it just was like a shocker. This was like no other Batman comic or any Batman version I had ever seen before. There's just real like life and death stakes going on, and, and there's even more of it as we go on, as you'll see. Um, so, meanwhile, um, our pal The Wrath, you know, has... Uh, uh, or rather, uh, Bruce Wayne and, and, and Alfred um, are talking it over, and 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 he's realized that there's someone who's been after Gordon, who's just very skilled and has some kind of connection to him and his date of the twenty sixth, which is weird. The twenty sixth is is June twenty or June twenty sixth is put out as the day that. Batman's parents were killed. And apparently even Alfred doesn't know that date, which seems a little bit weird. Um, but okay. Anyway, and we get to see the wrath and how he does his operations. And he's out on the streets. He's getting money. He's intimidating people. You know, the guy's like, look, I, I know Batman, but look, if he finds out I told you anything, he'll tear me apart. But the wrath's able to say, look, look, at least you'll be alive. I'll, I will, I will kill you. I'll end you. And the, this guy brings up the fact that Batman is always here in Crime Alley on the 26th, the fact that he kind of stumbled upon one year. And this is a very important date, obviously, to our boy as well, who um, quickly breaks into the library. And now this is another image from when I was a kid that just stuck with me. The, the guard coming and, oh, you'll have to speak up, officer. You got something. Sounds like you got something caught in your throat as he pulls the shuriken out of his neck. This just stuck with, this was like, whoa, this guy is hardcore. He's got a utility belt full of stuff too, but he, instead of batarangs and shark repellent, he's got throwing stars and switchblades and nunchucks and like badass stuff. Um, and he's able to pretty quickly see that based on the 26th and Bruce Wayne, uh, his parents being killed, he figures it out really quick. He's no dummy. Um, and, and quickly decides to make his move and send a message to Bruce Wayne was, Bruce Wayne is at home. He's at the uh, the funeral, uh, rather the uh, cemetery. Calls him to deliver some news. They did what? And his grave, his parents' grave, has been desecrated by the wrath. And he is bat Batman is pissed and says, "Give me CG." And and, and the the funeral guy is like, "Oh, it must be some kind of crazy new drug or something." And but. Batman knows it's Commissioner Gordon, and he knows that if they knew this was the way to send a message, that this guy knows who he is. So the, the jig is up, right? That means that Alfred could be in terrible danger. He calls Alfred uh, to tell him to get out of the house, but it's a little too late as uh, the wrath strikes and doesn't kill him, but just like basically hospitalizes him, sending a message that look, you get me Commissioner Gordon, or that your game is done, Batman. So Batman has hid, hidden Gordon away in sort of like a safe house. And meanwhile, out on the streets, they're sending out word that like, look, we just need to find Gordon. They're putting money out to all this seedy cast of characters. This is another one of my favorite panels. Look at these these various creeps and this guy here. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, they're, they're handing out all kinds of cash. Meanwhile, Alfred is uh, convalescing. And uh, people are like, Psh, you, you won't see Bruce Wayne around here. He's too rich to give a crap. In reality, we know the truth. Bruce Wayne is out undercover uh, on the streets where that all that uh, fine Commissioner Gordon money is sloshing around and gives him clues and gives him his first... Uh, tip on where to go the mobster who gave was giving out the money the mobster's daughter and so he goes to her apartment she's there and she sees him but doesn't recognize him recognizes the silhouette as we saw before but this time uh it's our man the batman and she's not ready for this batman he's not gonna hit a girl right ah, but he might give a nerve pinch anyway he sees uh uh the map She's got an area circled in red. It's all leading back to Crime Alley. There's Leslie Tompkins, who's supposedly Batman's meeting every year on the 26th. This is early er Leslie Tompkins. In recent continuity, she knows Batman's true identity. In this, she doesn't know. She doesn't really remember 
She doesn't connect that date to 26 with that happening. She's just like a do-gooder in this bad neighborhood. And I think that's that, that's probably realistic. There's a lot of crappy stuff happening in this neighborhood. Anyway, opposite of our last scene, she sees the silhouette and expects the Batman, but it's our man, the Wrath. So now she's left the ransom note. Uh, it's Gordon for uh, Leslie Tompkins, or the jig is up. Time for a showdown at the top of a building. Batman handcuffs himself. And uh, at the Wrath's orders, he lets Leslie Tompkins go. He's actually a pretty honorable guy, it seems like. He's not killing. He's never kills for the just like a love of killing or anything like that. It's always for purely practical, practical purposes in this comic. In fact, he pays off the guy who gave him the info in Batman when you really expect he would probably just kill him, and he could have, but he didn't. Anyway... But now he delivers his child. This is what his whole life has been leading up to, right? This is him killing Gordon. He's like, finally, it's over. It's over. Man, at last, mother and father, it's over. And that's when Batman realizes, he's like, I knew it. I, I knew there was a connection. The 26th, this is truly my opposite player. And uh, and now he's going to put Batman out of, out of action. But, oh, Gordon, not, not actually dead. We probably... We probably knew that, right? Um, but Batman's like, damn it, I could have dodged the bullet and done this on, and, and, and got there on my own. But now he knows Gordon's not dead. Get out of here, Jim. And now it's time to fight. And this is one of the most badass Batman action sequences I remember seeing. Definitely as a kid, I never saw one this intense. You know, I, I was used to like the Batman TV show. Pow! Bam! And this is like, there are sound effects, but man, this is some brutal close-up action. Batman realizes that this guy is his equal, not just in obsession, but in skill and prowess as well. And they have a badass knockdown, drag out fight. But man, the Edge has a big advantage and he knows it because he says, uh, you know, that's the difference between us, Batman. You try not to kill, but me, I've made a career out of it, right? This guy's a stone cold killer. Um, anyway, Gordon's down downstairs. He's ordering the police to, to uh, uh, take down the wrath but they can't tell who's who as they're fighting each other or on the top of the building anyway the wrath has got some like uh explosive thermite grenade or whatever and fire spreading on the roofs distracting batman he gets in close and now man brutal action like i don't remember seeing in batman back then back then you gotta remember this is pre-dark knight returns this is pre-batman year one this is pre-frank miller on batman this is pre coming out of the corny era it was batman was starting to get darker it was focusing it was getting there and this was i think the apex before miller anyway knife to the ribs for batman who throws the guy over but didn't mean to throw him into the fire that was started he's on fire batman's still doing his best to save him he pulls the bloody knife out of his out of his ribs and and, and the wrath plummets to his death his first and only appearance in dc comics uh batman kind of wraps it up and 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 who and leslie Tompkins ends up comforting the mobster's daughter who's like so grief stricken because she really loved this guy okay this was a this is a great comic so dense um so fantastic uh, I, I I wanted to check pages are numbered too. DC used to number their pages back then, so this is this is great. I don't have to I don't have to count the pages. Um, but this guy is a forty page giant. Yeah, forty pages. Um, I want to bring the back issue back in. Well worth your time and money to seek out. I mean, I would recommend seeking out this back issue because. You get to see all the cool ads. You get the Masters of the Universe. This is a book that's overdue for a facsimile edition. But I started thinking about it, and I'm like, facsimile edition? I'll bet the back issue's not that expensive. And frankly, it's not. You could get a copy in worse condition for less than a facsimile edition might cost if, if they ever decide to make one. Anyway, you can also get this in that Dark Knight um, Michael Golden hardcover that I showed. But there's one more place that you could pick it up. And this one I really... Is, this is really cool, man. This is Batman The Wrath trade paperback. And this collects oh, a book from, I think it was in Batman Unlimited originally, maybe. Uh, Batman Confidential 
issues 13 through 16. I suppose you could pick up those back issues too. Um, and this book reprints the issue that we just read, right? Which is great. Gives us the whole setup of the wrath, setup and death of the wrath. But then introduces us to this new mini series uh, drawn by Rags Morales and written by Tony Bedard. And Rags is doing his best Michael Golden here. And it's really nice work with Mark Farmer inks on a couple. And our uh, friend of the show, Mick Gray, inked several pages, uh, several issues of this as well. Um, and I'm not going to go through this whole story. But suffice it to say, the wrath is back. And we get to find out who it might be. And I'm not going to say, I don't want to spoil that. Because that could be fun for you. Um, but what I will say is this, right? Like if if... If Batman, uh, if Batman, if he was every, the opposite of Batman in every way, then it stands to reason maybe uh, that he might have had a Robin. That's all I'm going to say. Oh, he might have also had his own souped up version of the Batmobile that we get to see in this book. It, it's an awesome like monster truck version. Anyway, I'm not going to spoil that one. This is not about that book, but it is one of those rare like follow-ups that reintroduced this character to the DC universe without like rebooting or recreating. It just made this is a new version of the Wrath, but it fits in spectacularly with this original version and and the original story. And it just makes me happy. Uh you know, I read this issue today when it took it out and I read the original back issue and the smell and the, the feel and the, the look of the flatness of the colors and everything else just took me back to a simpler time in comics. It wasn't always better. There's a few corny moments in here. This is not written to the modern level of, of, of comics maturity level, if you want to call it that, that we see today, but it's pretty darn close. The art is fantastic and spectacular, and uh, it's not. it doesn't take six issues to get somewhere, right? We got 40 pages here, so every issue is crammed with storytelling goodness by a master of the medium, Michael Golden. If that's not enough to get you to go check out this back issue or one of the reprints of it, I don't know what is. Um, so anyway, thanks for watching this video. I'm having so much fun reviewing new comics, but I'm, I'm bringing more old comics into the mix. I'm personally getting back into back issues. I'm going to be digging through the back issue bins and I'm going to be pulling out some classics that I think uh, harken, harken back, bring us back to a simpler time or maybe like show us uh, some of the great works of uh, Days Gone By. And I want to thank each and every one of you for watching. If you made it this far, you're a diehard. So, hey, give me some suggestions. I'm looking for comments. I love comments. What I'm looking for is what are your favorite done-in-one single-issue stories, right? I'm looking for ones that are a single-issue comic. Ideally not, don't tell me it's Amazing Fantasy number 15 because I ain't going to buy that. But if it's a reasonably priced back issue, 10 bucks or less, and you're telling me that it's great, I want to check it out. So uh, thank you for your comments and engaging. And just thanks for watching and being who you are and coming here and let me talk about comics. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.